Welcome back to Game Theory 101. I'm William Spaniel. Today's topic is Bayes' Rule, which gives us a way to update our beliefs in light of new information. Let's get to it, starting with a bunch of different examples. This is really important in game theory and applicable in a lot of different ways. For example, imagine that you are the general manager of a sports team, and there's an amateur out there that you're interested in drafting or signing. So you get a scout, and you send the scout out to go look at the amateur. Scout comes back with a report. How do you take what's in that report and update your beliefs now about how good that amateur is? Maybe in a different context, you're the owner of an oil company, and there's a plot of land that has some oil on it, but you're not exactly sure how much. You have some beliefs about it, but you're not positive about what's going on there. So you send out a surveyor, the surveyor checks it out, comes back with a report. It's not a full report, he doesn't know exactly how much oil is out there, but he gives you new information. How do you update your beliefs in light of what the surveyor saw? In a different context, maybe you're a part of a government organization and you get an intelligence report about another government. In light of that new information in that intelligence report, how do you update your beliefs about how likely that other country is to go to war with you? Or how likely it is that that other country is going to be willing to give up some territory to you? Maybe in a last context, you're a buyer in a buyer-seller relationship. You make an offer to the seller, and the seller rejects your offer. Well, if the seller didn't like the amount that you were offering, maybe you should update your belief about how much the seller needs in order to be willing to sell the object in question. One thing to note is that that last example is different from the other three. The other three, you don't have a strategic component going on there. You just get a new signal, and you're updating your beliefs based off of that signal. This last example involves a player strategically behaving, and he or she is giving you new information in light of the strategy that he or she chooses. So this one is distinct from the other three. The other three we can use in a Bayesian-Nash equilibrium setting. So we have a simultaneous move game of incomplete information. Those are relevant to that. This fourth example is different. It's something that we haven't encountered before, where you're looking at an extensive form game of incomplete information. So it's not simultaneous, there are decisions being made sequentially, and there's incomplete information. So that's the subject of what we're talking about in the next unit. But Bayes' rule comes up in even simultaneous move games of incomplete information, so we still need to know it before we can close out this unit. And to illustrate this, to see how Bayes' rule works, let's look at an example. And our example is cancer screenings. Imagine, for whatever reason, there's a 60% chance that you have cancer and a 40% chance that you're clean. So we have prior information about how healthy you are, but it's not great. We would like to be able to get some more information about that. And we can do that by running a test for cancer. The test works in the following way. If you have cancer, the test comes up positive 90% of the time and negative 10% of the time. So there are some false negatives here. You may have cancer, but the test says that you don't. If you're clean, on the other hand, the test is perfectly accurate. So there won't be any false positives, only false negatives. A natural question to ask in this sort of situation is what is the probability that you have cancer given that you get a negative result, knowing that we have these false negatives? If you draw a negative, what is the probability that we should think that you have cancer? Bayes' rule tells us exactly how to calculate that. The probability of having cancer given a negative result from the screening is equal to the following. The probability that you have cancer times the probability of getting a negative result given that you have cancer divided by that same value, the probability that you have cancer times the probability of getting a negative screen given that you have cancer plus the probability of not having cancer times the probability of getting a negative screen given that you do not have cancer. So there's a lot of writing there, and we're going to illustrate this with a tree in a second. But what you'll see on your screen are a couple of different features. We have what the signal is and what the ultimate question we're asking. The ultimate question we're asking is about cancer, and the signal that we're getting is the negative or the positive from the screening. So if you're applying Bayes' rule, you're going to be using this sort of formula in some degree, and you'll just need to rewrite what's inside of each of those parentheses. 
So instead of having cancer, you need to fill in whatever it is that you ultimately care about. And instead of having negative, you'll fill in whatever the signal is. This is easy to see once you go through an example. So please don't be so discouraged by how many words are appearing on your screen right now. Once you look at a tree for this, it'll be a lot easier. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's draw a tree, a diagram for what's going on with these probabilities. So if we start at the top, there's a 60% chance that you have cancer and a 40% chance that you're clean. And then given that you have cancer, there's a 90% chance that the result will be positive from that test and a 10% chance that it will be negative. And meanwhile, if you're clean, there's a 0% chance that it will come up positive and a 100% chance that the screening will say that you're negative. So if we just look at what we have here, we can fill in point by point what appears in that fraction, and then we can calculate what your probability is of having cancer given a negative test result. So let's go through this step by step. Let's first look at the probability of having cancer. Well, that's easy, that's 60%. So we replace everything that we saw there with a 0.6. That's easy. We can do something very similar for the probability of getting a negative result given that you have cancer. So if we just look toward the left side of that tree, we see that given that you have cancer, the probability of getting a negative result is 10%. All right, so that's good, and we can keep moving on. On the right side of the game tree, we have the probability that you don't have cancer. That's 40%. Fill that one in. Easy. And then we can multiply that by the probability of having a negative result given that you don't have cancer. So on the right side of the tree, we see that if you are clean, the probability of getting a negative result is 100%. And so we fill that in. Good, simple, easy. And that's all you need to do. Once you fill it in, this is a simple calculation. And if you do a little bit of math, you get that this is equal to roughly three over 23, or exactly equal to three over 23, which is roughly 13%. So in this example, if the screening says that you don't have cancer, the probability that you actually do have cancer is still there. You have cancer about 13% of the time, despite the fact that the screening said otherwise. All right, that was one example, and it was relatively simple. However, this is hiding something which might not be especially apparent the first time you look at Bayes' rule. And so let's look at a more complicated example that fully illustrates what you might be missing out on. And in this new example, we're still going to be looking at cancer, but there's an extra little thing to it here. Instead of having cancer or being clean, you can either have cancer, you can have a benign tumor, or you can have nothing. And specifically, there's a 10% chance that you have cancer, a 40% chance that it's benign, and a 50% chance that you have nothing at all. We can run a test to check for whether you have cancer or not, just like we can before, but now there's this extra complication. If you don't have cancer, the test might come up positive as a consequence of you having that benign tumor. So if you have cancer, the test will come up positive 80% of the time and negative 20% of the time. If you have a benign tumor, the test will come up positive 30% of the time, a false positive for a dangerous, disastrous cancer, and negative 70% of the time. And if you don't have cancer, the test will still be perfectly accurate. So let's go ahead and now implement this conditional probability with Bayes' rule. We still wanna know, given a negative screening, whether you have cancer or not, and we can draw a tree, a diagram, to make things a little bit simpler for us. But we're still doing what we did before. On the top part of the fraction in the denominator, or rather in the numerator, we have the probability that you have cancer times the probability of getting a negative result given that you don't have cancer. And then we divide by the probability of having cancer times the probability of getting a negative screening given that you don't have cancer, exactly what we saw in the numerator before. And then we add to that the probability of not having cancer times the probability of getting a negative screening given that you don't have cancer. And the interesting little addition to this now is that there are multiple ways that the second part of the denominator can pop up. You can have a benign tumor and you're still cancer free. You don't have cancer or you can have a clean result. You can be completely clean. And that's another way that you don't have cancer. 
So there are multiple ways of getting a negative screening result that are not the consequence of you having cancer. And so in the denominator, we're gonna have to do a little bit of fiddling around here that we didn't have to do before. But let's see this in action. So let's start by filling this out just as we did previously. We know that the probability of you having cancer is 10%. So we can just put in a 0.1 there. That's easy. And we know given on the left side of that tree, if you have cancer, so suppose that you have cancer, what's the probability of getting a negative result? Well, that's 20%, 0.2. Easy. It's the second part here in the denominator that makes things a little bit tricky. So we need to look through this and think about how there are a couple of different ways that you could not have cancer and still get the negative result. And specifically, those two ways are the probability that you have a benign tumor times the probability that you have, or rather that you're going to get a negative screening result given that you have a benign tumor. And in addition to that, the probability that you're com uh, completely clean times the probability of getting a negative screening given that you're completely clean. So notice that we've expanded this. We have two different additions here. Rather than just one addition from before, we have two, because there are two different ways of arriving at that negative result. So what's happening in this denominator, and this is going to be true consistent across implementations of Bayes' rule, is you're going to be looking at every single terminal node of a tree, like what you see on the screen, that gives you the signal of what you're looking at. So the signal that we're looking at here is a negative signal. And so we need to calculate in each of these cases in the denominator, the probability of getting a negative result. And we need to go through the tree and get those probabilities all filled in there. That's again, going to be true regardless of what sort of circumstance you're using Bayes rule for. So how do we go about doing this? Well, it's easy if you have the tree in front of you. We can fill in the probability of a benign tumor being inside of you as 40%, and the probability of getting a negative screening given that as 70%. And in the rightmost part of this, the probability that you're clean is 50%, and the probability that you get a negative screen given that you're clean is 100%. And from there, you just, well, you do a little bit of math, and you get to 1 over 40. So in this case, if you get a negative result, then it's very likely that you don't have cancer. That's great. Uh, you only have cancer one in every 40 times here. So that's much better than it was previously. You can go home happy and sleep comfortably tonight. So that's Bayes' rule for you. And we're going to be playing with this quite a bit in the upcoming lectures. We'll have at least one more with simultaneous move games of incomplete information with just Bayesian Nash equilibrium. And then in the future, we'll see perfect Bayesian equilibrium in games of incomplete information. But finally, in the next lecture, we'll see why we call it Bayesian Nash equilibrium. Where is this Bayes coming from? Well, now we know what Bayes rule is. So clearly it's coming from Bayes rule. And we'll see an implementation of Bayes rule in a simultaneous move game of incomplete information in the next lecture. I hope you enjoyed this and I hope to see you next time. Take care.